This is my crosscut sled. It is quite a good crosscut sled. It has removable inserts, so I'm used for dadoing, for angled cuts, for regular 90 degree cuts. There's really only one problem I have with it, and that's the size. It measures in at about a thousand millimeters wide and 650 millimeters deep. It will do pretty much everything you could possibly want to do for a crosscut sled, except it's just heavy and bulky. Since building this, I've adopted a bit of a policy of optimizing for every day instead of every use. This will do everything, but it is not optimal for 99% of the work that I do. I'm going to build a scaled down version of this, maybe a little bit simpler as well, that meets 99% of my needs, and then when I do need whatever features this provides, I can bring this sled out. So this is the slightly oversized blank that I'm going to be using for my new crosscut sled. I've got some masonite for the top layer and 16mm MDF for the base layer. These slots allow for auxiliary fences and other accessories and I don't really use them. So these aren't going to make it to the next sled, but the, this insert system will. The first step was cutting the masonite into three strips, the 100mm or so wide section for the zero clearance plate, the larger section that will go on the left, and the skinnier stock supporting section on the right. As I've built a few crosscut sleds, I'm using this as a bit of a way to experiment with different materials and methods. This is the first time I'm using masonite, also known as tempered hardboard. And for laminating the pieces up, rather than using a bunch of weights, I'm opting to use a vacuum press bag. If you've got the equipment, I highly recommend this method. The tape on the edges kept everything from sliding around and it was far less stressful glue up. Once out of the bag, I only had to trim to final size. Nothing had shifted at all, unlike what typically happens when applying weights for clamps. The fence is made up of two layers of 16mm MDF and then a layer of masonite. As I said, this is my first time using masonite, so I didn't realize just how bad the edges would be. The layer of masonite on the edge got a bevel to form a sliding dovetail, but unfortunately it just really didn't pan out. Once more I turned to the vacuum bag to glue up the fence, and I had to do some bag repair while gluing it up. I'll go more into this on a future vlog episode on exactly what went wrong, but at this stage I'm not in love with the raw rocket bag. I deliberately left one side of the fence excessively long so I could guarantee a perfectly straight trim cut to make sure the fence was as straight as possible. Not a novel idea, but I haven't previously done this. I would also now recommend this. For my runners, I'm going for quarter saw and Vic Ash. I've got the fence fairly well set. I've been sneaking up on the cut. This is still a little bit firm and when I cut the second run, it'll also be a bit firm, but I can then take it to a hand plane and just shave off very, very small amounts. Found I was probably applying a little bit of different pressure throughout the cut, so some of the spots were jamming and other parts weren't, plus any sort of internal pressure or stress in the uh, runner might have sort of warped it a little bit. So by fine tuning with a hand plane or card scraper, it means I get a better overall fit. I cut the slot for the T-Track to go in, then realized, wait, I actually wanted to use bolts on this one as a bit of an experiment. How am I gonna attach these now? I can't drill a flat surface because I've got you know, that step lip there, that's no good for Forstner bits. So I built up a little jig, which goes like so, and you can see that corresponds with the hole I've already got there. So I can clamp this to the fence now, use the guide bushing in these holes, and that'll let me drill a hole, no problem. I could then drill an oversized through hole to allow for fence adjustment down the track. 
While I had the drill press out, I drilled the holes needed for the rest of the sled. Pilot holes through the zero clearance insert and base, flipping it for the counter ball, through holes for the bolt, countersinking, and then finally installing the threaded inserts into the base. These are type D inserts, so they have a flange which requires the counter ball. As another experiment, instead of using weights to glue the sled to the runners, I used a combination of double-sided tape and wood glue, then flipped it over to add screws. I'd give this a C-. I should have used some CA and wood glue, and left it for longer before pulling the sled out. As it was, it caused a little bit of shifting of the runners. I'm also trying out new HWM tape to reduce friction. It's not any smoother moving than wax, but it does last a lot longer. So I have skipped ahead a little bit and I've made an attached, what I would call the back fence, the non-user side of the fence. Uh, the reason for that is it's really uninteresting and there's no experimentation on that end. It is necessary, it holds the two halves of the crosscut sled in position. So now what I can do is actually make that first cut most of the way through, line up the fence roughly, then continue the cut and do the whole five cut method. I've got this within 0.0625 of a millimeter, so that's um, more than good enough. I could probably dial it in a little bit more, but I don't want to. I think I'm more likely to knock it out of alignment than anything. From the experimental point of view, bolts work great. If I had have thought about it a bit more, I would have actually added four bolts so that I could lock the whole thing down with bolts, but I didn't. So I've got two adjustment bolts, and then once I got my adjustment right, I sunk, uh, I think it was another three screws, just wood screws, into the bottom of this to really lock it down. The flip stop was the subject of my previous video. I made the flip stop on the CNC. However, I didn't think about the scale. I've got no adjustment, so uh, some sort of plexiglass or Lexan or whatever acrylic uh, scale built into this would be good. That way I could just make minute adjustments. Overall, I'm really happy with the results of this sled. Not so happy with the masonite, the tempered hardboard, it's not great anytime you need to cut into it or drill. It routes okay, but uh, it does leave essentially a bit of a burr. And because of the nature of the material, you can't really sand that off all that well. In this case, MDF is actually the superior material, which is a bit of a worry. Now I do want to revisit this concept a little bit in the future. The table saw by far is my most used machine. So making sleds that work for me and make this a more versatile machine Seems like a good idea. I may go for all MDF. It does actually seem a very viable material for this and on a smaller sled scale, the weight isn't an issue. I do know there are some light weight plywoods available. I think it's called Falcata plywood. There's poplar plywood and a few others that should be very dimensionally stable and relatively inexpensive, certainly cheaper than birch. I think before I go ahead and do that, however, I'm gonna live with this sled for a little bit and make sure it's the right size for me. It seems fine for now, but I'm not sure if it's too small or whether I can still go smaller again. It is super nice, however, to be able to put my rip set fence as small as 200 mil or eight inches and still use the crosscut sled or use the router table or whatever. There's no plans for this because it's a super simple sled. If you're really interested, it's 600 mil wide by 400 mil deep. The fence sits at 90 millimeters tall. From that, you should be able to guess the rest. It's really about making a tool that works for me rather than a general purpose sled. Thanks for watching.